Member for Nelson Creston. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, a year ago, the Minister for Local Government was caught refusing to take back nearly $200,000 of public money that found absolutely no use in the fake town of Jumbo. Instead of reducing or discontinuing funding to the town of no one, Jumbo now gets $300,000 a year. This is an unreal waste of taxpayer dollars, Madam Speaker. And yes, the member from Kootenay East is heckling again on this issue. It gets him riled up every time, Madam Speaker. <laughs> he loves his pet projects. And that money, Madam Speaker, is just sitting there and going to no one in the Kootenays. So, Madam Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Local Governments, when is she going to stop giving money to a fake town? Minister of Community, Sport and Cultural Development. Thank you very much, Honourable Chair. Uh, earlier today, we hear about you're not giving municipalities enough money, and then we hear that don't stop giving local governments money. Honourable Speaker, Honourable Speaker, since 2001, our our government has provided close to members will come to order. Members will come to order. Minister, just take your seat. Please proceed. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. We are extremely proud that we've invested over $3 billion in local governments across British Columbia to ensure that the critical infrastructure planning, the uh, official community plans happen, to ensure that the investment happens to ensure growth in communities. Honourable Speaker, um, this year alone, we're providing $115 million in small community and regional district grants and traffic fine re revenue sharing grants that members across this room have the ability to take advantage of, Honourable Speaker. But given that there is a modest operating cost to the municipality of Jumbo at this time, it is prudent practice to ensure that we're contracting out with neighbouring municipalities and any surplus, Honourable Speaker, any surplus that, the, that is not used will be held within a reserve fund available for future investments to benefit taxpayers and future residents. Here, here. Mm -hmm. Member for Nelson Creston on a supplemental. Madam Speaker, the Minister does know that the only reason that Jumbo exists is because it's their pet project and that nobody lives there. You're giving money to a town with no one. They have no use for any of that money other than to drive the Minister of Energy and Mines pet project that nobody in the region wants, Madam Speaker. And the minister talks about grants to municipalities. Well, Johnson's Landing residents need $125,000 for their new water system after the deadly landslide in 2012. And they're waiting, Madam Speaker. They don't have access to any grants for that. But Jumbo doesn't have to wait, Madam Speaker, and the injustice of that is felt by every Kootenay resident, and we are disgusted. This minister is throwing money at a town of no one, no pipes, no transit, no schools, no hospitals, no people, nothing, Question. Madam Speaker. Question. So why does she have no trouble giving Jumbo money? But she can't ensure that the people of Johnson's Landing have what they need to get something as basic as drinking water. Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Well, it's not just side of the House that has supported Jumbo. I have a letter here from uh, two former Premiers, 1993, uh, Mike Harcourt. Oh, he was a Premier. And he talked about how nice it was meeting and, and, and looking at the high-class resort. And then, oh, another 
another former premier here to talk about what an excellent opportunity to look at the consideration of Jumble Creek Ski Resort proposal. Honourable Speaker, what is different from, from us is we understand communities like Whistler. Whistler, when it started years ago, uh, had the same conversation. And Members, members, minister. Minister, please continue. Thank, thank you very much. Honourable, honourable Speaker, look, we, we support tourism, we support economic development, we support ensuring that we're doing the proper initiatives to ensure that we have a strong, diversified uh, economy in British Columbia. And Honourable Speaker, we're going to continue to support we're going to continue to support local governments to ensure that they have the types of infrastructures and planning necessary. Honourable Speaker, could you imagine? Could you imagine uh, if the proper uh, infrastructure development is not put in place with official community plans and bylaws in communities to grow the economy? Yes. Columbia River Revels. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So, so just to understand this, the minister is asked about her spending three quarters of a million dollars here and now, and she uses a 22-year-old quote. The member who asked the question was in junior high when that quote was made. A lot's changed. A lot has changed. Right? The letters pack. Let's 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 spend a, a bit more time on this. The letters patent for Jumbo Resort Municipality were required required an official community plan, and it was supposed to be in place by last February. But the minister gave an extension, and an extension for an interesting reason. The BC Liberal mayor and council needed time for public consultation. <laughs> public consultation in a community with no public. So I guess the question for the minister is this. Why is she permitting more time and giving money to have a fake council do a public consultation in a fake town with no people, no buildings, and no services. Minister of Community, Sport, and Cultural Development. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, a lot has changed. Uh, around economic development, we here put more money into municipalities, take money out of municipalities, support. Uh, um, you don't support economic development, you don't support tourism, you don't support that kind of diversity in the area. Honourable Speaker. Continue. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. We'll continue to work. Uh, with the community to ensure that the infrastructure and the official community plans and bylaws are put in place. Honourable Speaker, when an extension was requested, an extension was requested because at the time um, uh, when consultation was being required, communities and lo uh, local governments were in an election. Uh, the time of consultation was in November. We provided them the opportunity um, to have that and we'll continue to ensure that we're supporting these communities. Columbia River, Revelstoke on a supplemental. Well, I, I guess the minister said they're waiting for an election. I, I suspect <laughs> they're going to be waiting a long time before there's an election there. <laughs> uh, here's here's some, some more, and this, this should be fun too. The Jumbo <laughs> Municipality had its books audited. The auditors finished with an interesting, if a rather obvious, observation. This is a direct quote. Given that all the money for the municipality comes from the province, this casts doubt about Jumbo's ability to continue as a going concern. <laughs> now, the minister was talking about sustainability issues. That's a pretty good example of one. I've never, I've never seen an auditor decide to add that to a community's books, but there we go. Uh, not even Jumbo's auditors, uh, auditors think that Jumbo's real or is ever going to be real, and yet Jumbo is receiving more and more money for public consultations and a mayor and council in a municipality with no people. So the question again to the minister, why does this government keep pouring money into this farce? 
Minister of Community, Sport and Cultural Development. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker, and to the member opposite, thank you for the question. But sometimes leadership is about having a vision. Sometimes leadership is about ensuring that we're growing the economy. Sometimes leadership is about ensuring that there are actually jobs for people in communities. Honourable Speaker, if I may, remind the members opposite, we've got communities such as Whistler, we've got communities such as Sun Peaks that have the same kind of resort municipality set up to ensure that we are the most vibrant, exciting place in the world. We support supernatural British Columbia in ensuring that tourism is going to remain vibrant in British Columbia. Yeah.